Hello and welcome to this another week of our online lectures on multimedia and in this week uh, we'll be uh, learning something on you know generative adversarial networks and this is a very interesting topic and perhaps you know this is the uh, last week lectures and the next week would, would be our you know final exam and so yeah, I believe that this topic will be so much interesting to you that you know you will remember remember it and perhaps you know some of you will work on this you know again in future so the contents is very simple that you know first we'll be talking something on artificial neural networks because uh, this generative adversarial networks is all based on neural networks so don't worry even though if you might not have and some understanding on neural networks but you know I will give you some background so that it will be helpful you know to understand these GAN basics so based on our understanding then we'll see that how GAN works and then we'll see the various applications of GAN and you see these pictures over here so this is very cute cat pictures and this is very handsome guy this beautiful lady and there are other cute pet pictures and uh, these pictures uh, looks like so real but actually these are fake pictures so we'll see that how GAN basically play a role in generating these sorts of you know fake pictures so what is GAN so as you can understand it and, and perhaps you, you guess that GAN is basically a machine learning framework and it was designed by you know uh, this you know, God fellow and good fellow and his colleagues in just several years back uh, so in GAN basically you know, there are two neural networks the two neural networks you know, you know in a, I mean they play kind of game and they contest with each others and they finally come up with a very beautiful result so we can train the GAN you know based on some realistic you know data based on some real data and then GAN try to learn uh, that how to generate the new data that has the same characteristics as of the original training data so for example if we train the GAN on some real photographs then it can generate you know some photos that looks like you know the real photo but that's actually the fake photo you know similar to that I showed here so what is GAN then so GAN is is the same as let's say you know we have this kind of you know realistic you know photos you know and then you know but you know we'll try to you know generate this realistic photos if we if we if we if we you know train this generator you know based on you know this kind of you know realistic photos in an indirect manner and after that you know what we do is basically the very simple thing is this one that we will give some random vectors and and the output of the GAN would be you know this kind of image this image look like you know these original images so the input direct input for the generator is basically simply random numbers random data and from there we'll get this kind of image it's very interesting things so uh, we can you know uh, exemplify you know like a uh, metaphoricals in a way that you know is kind of this kind of things let's say these generators basically try to you know generate some images you know that looks like you know this you know original images but there is some something like police and some you know police cop right or some inspectors he try to see that this you know image is fake or real so in the beginning maybe this cop you know say that oh your image is poor image and it's a fake image and then generator again you know try to generate some new images and then again he checks and in this way you know you know iteratively finally the generator comes with some real images so that's the you know basic mechanisms and it's all about you know here inside you know this generator is basically in neural networks so let's you know see that how neural networks basically works and how it looks like so neural networks you know as you might have some idea that you know as it says the neural networks so neural networks is basically you know is 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 inside our brain right how our brain works you know the inside our brain you know we have a lot of neurons and each neuron is basically connected with one another in a very complicated manner let's say we just try to simulate that networks here so let's say this is one neuron this is another neuron this is another neuron so this is the first layer of the neuron and this is the second layer of the neuron this is the third layer of the neuron so because it's a network that artificial networks it is not the real neural networks it's artificial so let's say this you know neuron we say this is a one node and this is another node or you can say a neuron 
this is so in that means in the first layer we have three neurons and the second layer we have three no neurons and third layers we have three neurons or three nodes we say and also we say this is basically input layer this is the output layer and in between these layers sometimes we say you know hidden layers so you can say that this is the three layers neural networks we can say in this manners so how this you know networks basically works is very simple let's say just think about you know let's say this node over here so so you see this node how it is connected so this node this this you know this node the first node in the layer one is basically connected to the first node of the second layer and also you see the first node of the first layer is also connected to the second node of the second layer also this node is connected to this third layer of the second uh, third node in the second layer similarly this node is connected to this node this node is connected to this node this node is connected to this node so there are you know some complicated connections are here so sometimes you know each node is connected for example each of or each of these nodes is connected to each of these nodes in the second layer and it is also possible that this node is subsequently connected to you know the nodes in the third layer and sometimes some connections might be missing also so it's it's not that every node must be connected depending on the networks and and our model so how it works then so think about that let's say let's say you know i have some some numbers that's coming from our our input data that we are providing or let's say from other part of the networks so big bigger networks let's say some numbers is coming from here let's say this number is maybe 0 0.2 you know just i'm thinking this number is maybe 0 0.3 this number is maybe 0 0.4 okay so in this way and then you see from here so 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 so, so this number is basically is coming all about here right so it's better not here maybe maybe it's better we, we can think of, of, of about here okay so how this node is connected see this node is basically connect is taking input from you know node one and the node two and the node three of the layer one right and let's say you know some numbers are coming you know from its output that means the output of node one maybe some numbers and that number is multiplied by this number and then you know it is coming here and then again you know let's say the output of the node 2 is some number and then this number is basically you know also going here but it will be multiplied by this one okay w21 so w21 means it's coming from the second node and going to the first node of this layer right and similarly you know this also connected to this one right so whatever the output of this node it will be multiplied by this number and then it will be going here so all about if we can see that so in this layer is basically you know uh, taking three numbers so that means the output of this number multiplied by with this output of this node is multiplied by with that and output of this node is multiplied with this and then at this node it will sum up all of these numbers okay that each each multiplication result will be summing up and this is basically the output of layer 2 okay so that how it works so that means each node will perform in this manner so so that means what this weight that what is the output of this number it depends on the output of this one this one this one and also that how you know these connections is multiplied so these connections we say weight okay w e i g a s t okay so we say w e i g a s t weight so w is basically the weight okay so i hope that you 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 understand it now so let's say we just you know uh, try to understand you know more you know uh, nicely just you know by focusing on a single node so how it's working then you see this is the single node that we are saying the same that let's say some number is coming you know from the output of other node and this is let's say you know a and this is the node from coming from the node b and this is the output you know coming from the node c so this is basically the input for this node and then each input number is basically you know these are the weight multiplied by this wa this is wb and this is wc so here the the sum of this input is basically then what a multiplied by wa plus b multiplied by wb 
plus C multiplied by WC. So this is that one. So in another words, we can clearly see that, you know, the summation of the input signal. So this X is basically A multiplied by WA plus B multiplied by the WB and the C multiplied by the WC. So this is the inputs for this node. Okay. Now this input is basically the node. Now, what is the output? Output is not directly this one, basically. The output will be, output of this node is basically a function of this, you know, some, some signal, okay, or some summation of the data. So, so the, what kind of function it is? Now, it depends on, 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 on your design or, or, or someone's, you know, or characteristics of some phenomena that we are trying to model, okay? So, this, there are, you know, several, you know, outputs might be, you know, maybe, Maybe so. What are the outputs actually? Output possible output is is something like this. Okay, you might be have okay. So maybe you know y equal. We can say that okay y x is is something like this. One over you know one plus e to the power minus x. You can think of that this function. That okay. That my my output y would be depending on x with this manner. So this kind of functions we say sigmoid function. Okay. And, and there are other kinds of functions, but let's say we start with sigmoid function. You don't need to worry that why we need to use sigmoid and this, you know, this various other kind of function that we'll be telling a little later, but you don't need to worry about that, okay? Just, just think about that, you know, output is basically, you know, is a function of our summation of some of the input signals for each node. So let's say we just take this example and it will be clarified. Let's say we have this simple two layers networks and it will will understand that how the signal is basically follow is basically following or maybe flowing through this neural network so so we have this two layer networks and and this one is basically let's say input so let's say input is you know here is 1 and this is 0 0.5 and this layer 1 we have two nodes node 1 and node 2 and the weight for from node 1 to node 1 is basically let's say 0 0.9 and the weight from node 1 to node 2 is 0 0.2 and then weight from node 2 to node 1 is 0 0.3 and then weight from node 2 to node 2 is let's say 0 0.8 so we like to calculate and let's say it has two outputs okay so it had two inputs and two outputs it doesn't matter you can have maybe you know maybe three out three inputs two outputs or maybe one inputs five outputs is possible I mean, depending on your network diagram and network connections. But in this uh, networks, we have two inputs and two outputs from the input layers and output layers. So now let's we try to calculate that what would be the output, you know, of the the the, the first you know node. Okay. So to calculate the first node, first we'll have to calculate its input. So what is its input? Its input is basically x. So what is the x? And as you remember that x would be you know from here is basically you know this one uh, you know this one will be multiplied by this one so that means you know one multiplied by 0 0.9 and then this you know this this 0 0.5 will be multiplied by this 0 0.3 so that means plus 0 0.5 is the input and then it will be multiplied by 0. 3. So this is how it is. So so this is basically the input of our this node, right? And exactly this is the case as, as you can see. 1 multiplied by 0 0.9 plus 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.3. If you just, you know, uh, do the simple math, so you'll get the x equal to 1.05. So we understand the input of this node over here. So this is basically, you know, 1.0.5. Now, what would be the output? Output definitely y. Basically, we are considering a sigmoid function. So that means y is 1 plus e to the power minus x. So if you just count it, 1 plus e to the power minus, uh, so 1, what, what, what was the numbers of that one? Is 1.05. So 1.05. So if you just you know, calculate it, then it becomes 0 0.7408. So this is basically that number, the 0 0.7408. This is very simple. So similarly, we can do, you know, these calculations. So this one, that, that what is the output of this node? This node will be collected as the same, that output from the first node multiplied by the link weight. So that means the output from the first node is, you know, is, is 1 
multiplied by 0 0.2 plus you know uh, this 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.8 so then you just have 0 0.6 and if you again apply the same sigmoid function then you you got 0 0.6457 so this is the way that how neural networks basically works so once you set once you have these weight parameters, so these are the parameters, or we can say weight parameters or neural networks parameters. Once you set the parameters of, of this, this, you know, connections, and if you just, you know, give the input, and it will give you the output. And also you need to set that what kind of functions you use, okay? Now, when you, when you get this, you know, output functions, we say the neuron is basically, you know, firing based on, based on your sum signal, you know that 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 things is coming when you get this output we say this is neuron you know is basically turned on or firing or it provided the outputs now there are actually several you know uh, functions that you know that how we you know calculate the one very popular is basically the sigmoid functions because we, and as you see this is input you know is following this kind of things it is the x and this is the y it has a very smooth transition from very minus you know minus infinite to plus infinite and it so here is basically changing very rapidly and then as this goes it basically saturated and, and changes slowly and whereas there is other kind of you know also this kind of function the output function this sometimes we say activation functions because these functions causes the nodes to provide the output okay so anyway this another function is called a step function in a step function what it says that you know there is some threshold you know so that means if the sum signal of the input signal that is the values of x is you know up to this point maybe this number is maybe 0 0.3 or 0 0.6 or whatever number so so until it it less than you know some some number then it is basically the output is zero and once it goes you know above that threshold then it becomes one so this is that's it okay and there is another function called relu function relu function it says that you know as long as it is less than zero it is basically zero and once you know the input is basically you know over here you know something you know like greater than zero then output is the same as of x so this is also an, another you know popular choice so now we are not interested in that here now as i told you that you know the in the in our gan that is you know generative adversarial networks we all have you know two neural networks one neural networks we say generator and another neural networks we say discriminators so this you know just is just a conceptual diagram that i'm saying in let's say these generators is basically taking some you know let's say some a, a vector and then output is a you know vectors of larger dimensions this is maybe you know four dimension vector and this is the higher dimension vectors so you can think of that you know if i just you know give few pixels randomly and it will produce some image and then discriminator you just take this you know output of the generators so that means the higher dimension vectors and then it basically calculates some scalar quantity some small values so this is you know these two networks okay so now let's you know we we study again so the basic idea of GAN is start from here that this generator you know is basically neural networks and or you can say is is basically a function right if you if you just think of that this generator is basically a function taking one input you know doing some simple mathematics that i showed and then are producing some output so this generator is basically taking a vector you know you can take think of it as a vector and then it's, it's, it's producing some image or we can think of this this vector is basically low dimensions and this output image is basically high dimensional vector if you, you know that you know uh, we already know about the vectors and the image dimensions what is image so those things so for examples like this let's say this is a generators so we have this you know L, a, 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 a something you know let's say you know let's say a simple you know uh, a vectors of some you know, some component this one this one this is a random vectors so and if we can think of that let's say each dimension and then generator output basically uh, let's say an image of like this and we can think that each dimensions of this you know input vectors is maybe represent some characters in your image the output image i mean there is no such thing but so you know metaphorically or maybe analogically we can say that maybe each dimensions you know causes of this definitely this generator is basically you know randomly set its parameters and then it produces this kind of things in the beginning so for example here let's say we change this kind of you know 
dimensions for example it was 0 0.1 but now we give 0 0.3 maybe the generator produces you know a, a, an image with longer hair so in this sense we can say these dimensions is responsible you know to to provide this longer hair or shorter hair right and let's say maybe these dimensions we can think of maybe these dimensions it was 2.4 but now it's you know 5.4 and we can think that if we change these dimensions perhaps the output image will be coming up with a blue hair right or maybe these dimensions if we change these dimensions maybe if we give 3.5 maybe you know the mouth will be open you know here so this kind of you know, things we can see so that means in the generator is basically a neural network where we are providing a random vectors and then output would be an image that means a, a two-dimensional you know vectors with with some pixel size and image size but we can think of in general high dimensions vector now what is discriminator then well discriminator is also basically a neural networks where this discriminator is basically taking an input is the opposite of the of the generator the generator you know took a vectors and produced some image and then this image going to the discriminator which is basically a neural network and then at the output is basically a scalar okay this is scalar is a you know, larger value means you know the image is a real image and if this output is a smaller values so this discriminator decided this image is a fake image so it's something like that let's say you are providing this image in, in into the input of the discriminators and it it calculates all of these you know parameters and those mathematics inside these neural networks and then if you know output is one or maybe let's say you know high values then it's a oh, okay so it's a you know real image so for example this one calculate the one value system is a real image but if you know this kind of fake image you give the discriminator decide okay because the output values is you know poor so this is basically a you know fake image for example the output is 0 0.1 so discriminator decide this image is a fake image so uh, so so how this you know a generator a discriminator basically work together so this is the algorithms how it works so we initialize both in you know, the generators and discriminators with some weight matrix so there is some mechanism to how we can initialize and some you know some practice but we are not discussing with these things but let's say in the initially we have some weight and then you know we, we just you know go forward so we will we will have multiple iterations but let's say you know the we will have two steps after we initialize both generator and discriminators then we have you know two step step one and then step two so this is step one and step two will you know uh, perform multiple times so what is the step one step one is basically we fix our generator and then we update our discriminator what do we mean by that see first to initialize both generator and discriminator so initialize mean we just you know um, you know fix all of those you know parameters the weight matrix that we saw w that we calculated so both you know we just set now you know we will change this discriminator you know parameters you know provided that you know the generators weight matrix are fixed how so this is that is step one okay so let's say the generator you know it's you know its weight matrix is fixed so what we do is basically we just take a randomly vector random vector and let's say produce this image okay and there's another random vectors it produces you know another image and another random vectors and produces one image and another random vectors and produces some image and these vectors basically randomly we just you know sampled okay we can follow some statistical distribution but we are not talking on that so let's say then we have you know this you know one generated image one two three four generated image and then we also you know then this we have this one and then let's say you know we have some uh, some database of real images okay so what we do is we just you know sample some images from the databases and so let's say we have you know because it here is four so we just you know sample four real images so these re both these real images and these generated images we basically you know feed you know into this discriminator okay so discriminator now what it it updates its weight from this initialized weight how it updates so it will try to give you know high score that means with this real image 
and the low scores with this generated image because this discriminator know these are the fake images so definitely it will assign zero scores with these things so generators will think that okay if these are the fake image and i'll have to assign zero and these are the real image i'll have to assign one so how i need to adjust my weight so accordingly it updates is all the weight parameters so we said discriminator parameters updated okay so or we can say the discriminators learn to assign high score to real objects real images and low score to this image and by learning means assigning its weight matrix and update its weight matrix so this is the step one so step one generator is fixed that means the initialization as it is and then its up, you know, discriminators update its weight parameters and then is go the step two now step two is basically now the discriminator on already learned now the discriminator will be fixed you see this discriminator parameters will be fixed and then the generators will be updated how it will update so okay now it, it then gives another you know uh, generator gives this is step two now it, it gives this vector random vectors and then you know generator produces this output right and then because it's you know produces output and then this goes to the discriminator and the discriminator parameters already you know have been updated in the step one and now it is a fix and then it you know provides some values so what is this the scalar values let's say 0 0.13 because you know this is 0 0.13 now what because it is a 0 0.13 values and you know that you know these values now this generator know this this is the 0 0.13 values now what it needs to do you know based on this 0 point because he knows this is a my 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 you know output the discriminators output is basically you know very less that is 0 0.13 but he knows the generator knows that this output should be you know very high you know if i like to you know uh, if I like to see the discriminator provides, you know, and thinks that my image is a real image. So generator must want that these values should be a large values. So what it do because it's a less value. So based on that, because it's 0 0.3, based on that, this generator basically changes its parameters. Okay, that that so that you know it it will you know generate a higher you know good good quality image. And it it you know it it just you know do based on some mechanism and that you know mechanism is you know behind you know is beyond the scopes of these lectures but i will give you some idea that how to do that okay so now for this timing let's say then because it's no that the output is 0 0.13 so this taking as a feedback you know this to the generator and the generator update this the, you know its weight right and then it you know is produces this image so when it produces image image this discriminator is basically giving a better values right so in this way the generator basically learns how to fool the discriminators in another words after getting the feedback from the discriminators it up this generator updates its parameters right or in other words we can think of you know this this is a basically one neural network and this is another neural network these together so we can think of a large network right so if it is a five layer networks and this is a five layer we can think of this is together so is a 10 layer neural networks so that means many hidden layers behind this is input layer this is the output layer and many hidden layers you know inside of that so this is the step two so that means in step step one was you know you fix your generator update your discriminators in step two fix your discriminator and update your generator and then you know basically this goes together right so that means the first step is learning discriminators while generator is fixed and the step two learning generators while the discriminator is fixed and you know getting with the feedback they just you know you know learn each other discriminator learns and generator also learn from the discriminator try to fool the discriminator and these iterations you know goes on multiple times so after you know if we see the entire process together it looks like that okay that let's say the way in the beginning this is the first generations you know first version of our generators give the poor image then discriminators you know based on this real image the discriminators basically you know learns a uh, discriminator learns you know to update its parameters and then it becomes the fast version of the discriminator based on that it then generator you know learns its is 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 uh, update its parameters and then become the version 2 and then produce a better quality image then 
based on that again is compared with the real image with this image then discriminator changes its parameters that means update its parameters it become the version 2 and then this goes to the generator and the generator become version 3 and then you know based on that in the generate discriminator also update so become version 3 so in this way it goes on and if you continue in this way then after 100 updates there's this image the generator produces it look like that if you got thousands of iterations then it goes like this if you perform 2000 iterations the image looks like that you know if you go five thousands update it looks like that if you got thousands and even this fifty thousands of you know iterations that finally this image looked like that because you know we started you know the real image was look like you know these kinds of animation characters right it's basically coming the you know japanese you know japanese anime characters so from there you know this real image so in this way we are basically you know training our you know generators and discriminators and that's why you see after that it these generators is basically able you know to produce very realistic images and then discriminator at one point say okay these images are basically the the real images so ultimately they compete with each others and finally the generators you know able to fool the discriminators and his success so that's that how this gan works so i believe you know that this you know understanding would be helpful for you okay now let's you know uh, let me explain that how you know these discriminators and generators basically they try to learn i mean they try to update okay how what is the update mechanisms actually so so think about you know these kinds of generators i mean it's a very simple you know two layer generators is also two layer discriminators and let's say the generator input is basically only one you know input vectors um, just only one one input and this is sometimes also neural networks also come up with something some bias that means this node is always the output is one okay so so that means this one will be multiplied by this weight and then it will be going here so this kind of things so don't worry about it this is, is uh, this kind of things might happen so anyway the generator has just a single input and and there is some you know output of four dimensions vectors right so that means four you know different values will be coming or we can say let's say the output of the image is you know maybe we can think of in this way that's two by you know maybe two by two you know two images okay okay we can we can think of in this way that two by two images so maybe you know this kind of very simple diagram and that means each output is corresponding to the each pixels so it is just one way of think thinking okay so uh, whatever so this is you know how it is so anyway so in the beginning because it's just a one number so it just let's say it's just randomly taking one number in a very beginning so random vectors so maybe 0 0 0.2 0 0.3 and then come and then it has some weight parameters here in the in the initially and then uh, so that's called initialization weight matrix then it produces this output from 1 2 3 4 and let's say this is that output 0 0.25 1 0 0.5 0 0.7 so this output of these generators become the input of the discriminators and then it goes again through these neural networks so that means this multi these numbers will be multiplied you know by some weight here 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 so initially the discriminators also had some random weight and then it, it it just sum up here and and then some signal is coming here and then you know it produces some you know output based on sigmoid function so let's say this is that output okay so this is the output you know that's coming so we started with these kinds of you know, random numbers is going through the generators going through the discriminators and then finally discriminator produces 0 0.68 okay now things so so discriminator produces 0 0.68 right now what this discriminator wants so discriminator basically wants that because he knows that you know i'll have to make this generator you know because it's a fake and generated image so discriminators you know basically wants that okay this output should be zero right generally whatever these things is come so he like to see this output is basically zero this is if it is a fake image so that means this output would be zero so if it is so and and somehow that let's say the output is large if output is large so that means what the generators will is discriminator will think okay i maybe i have performed a lot of error that's why this output is basically large okay and if this output is you know coming you know zero so discriminator will think 
oh yeah so i have done a very perfect job and there is no error so that means when the output of this discriminator will be large so the discriminator error function that how 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 correct it was to decide its weight parameters so he will think that you know if it is a large number that means my weight parameters was not good and if it is a small parameters so he will think that my you know weight uh, parameters was you know setting uh, was 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 good right so in another word if we just you know like to see you know something you know kind of this kind of things let's say so discriminators what it wants discriminator want want to make to see zero the output our output is zero so, and so that means what if it a large value large value comes in so he thinks that error my error to design to design the weight parameters is basically high right error is high and if you see the output is basically small so he thinks that my error is basically low right so how to model this kind of phenomena so we can we can we can think of like this based on the outputs we can think like this right so for example you know uh, so just you know I, I'm, I, we are just saying you know, like this one this kind of things you know uh, so so we can model like this that let's say the output of the discriminator is x and let's say this is the you know uh, this is the error function okay that how it model the error okay it is the you know output of the discriminator and then he thinks that okay maybe you know i can model this kind of phenomena like this one that's negative of the logarithm one minus x means here is predictions right so that means it will see that if if is error is like that for the discriminator that if the predictions comes high so that means that negative logarithm of one minus predictions is basically this number is become very high okay so and the if this number is basically low the error basically becomes low so this is you know one way to model this error but for the generator perspectives so generator thinks you know opposite so generator thinks if the output of the discriminators you know become high so it it thinks the generator thinks that okay my 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 weight matrix is really good so i don't need to worry about so that means how it can you know it can model its you know error functions is like this one that if this is the predictions if this is the predictions and let's say this is the error function we can say this is the error function is y and this prediction let's say x so maybe it, it can think like this one some simple exponential functions right so it can think that okay if you know my prediction if i see the discriminator prediction is high so that means the error is basically less and if it is prediction is you know low so that means the error is you know high so this is you know how it thinks of okay on in other words we can think of like this um okay so uh, let's let's see this uh, maybe i can again so maybe let's say if the out if if this is the z right see this is the input to the generator so if this is the input to the generator so what is the output of the generator that's the output of the generator is this one right and if this is the input of the discriminators what is the output of the discriminators so we can think that output of the discriminator is basically d of you know z of z right so what is the error function to the discriminator then error function to the discriminator is minus ln 1 minus d of z z like this one right so we can think you know in this pattern so this is the error function of the discriminators and and what is the error function to the generator error function to the generator is minus ln you know you know d of z of z so this is this one so it looks like you know just opposite that how they consider their error function okay now once you have it now what now okay so now so based on this output discriminator decide okay this is my error right that minus ln 1 minus 0 0.68 and because you know that this is my this this is my error i have done so then how much i will have to adjust these parameters based on this error function what it does is basically it goes the back propagation so these values you know you know it just go step by steps and differential manners and it then you know adjust the error accordingly and also the generator know that this is my error function and based on this error i'll have to adjust my weight so they also do some back propagation so in this way that each time some output is coming and then it goes the back propagation through these neural networks and discriminators 
you know updates its weight and the generator updates its weight based off these kinds of error function and this is called negative logarithmic negative you know log, log loss function okay negative log loss function okay so this is you know an idea that how it works so finally if we just see the functional diagram with back propagations you see this is the generators so this is taking a sample input is a random sample and then it produces some sample and then that there are some database of the real images you know take some sample and then discriminator you know take both of the real image and this output image based on these two discriminators basically give some output this output basically then you know used for calculating the loss function or the error function and then is basically you know goes back to the through the discriminator to generator so this is called back propagation and they you know update their weight so this is you know pretty much you know the things that how it works the GAN and I believe that it will be helpful for you now let's see what are the applications definitely as you can imagine the applications is basically you know you, you can generate photographs of human faces you see these photographs these all are fake photographs and it has been generated by this you know GAN this you know um, generative adversarial networks and now you understand why generative and adversarial network because adversarial means enemy right is competing each other and generative means what generator generated the data characteristics based on based on you know the you know based on the data characteristics i mean based on the data characteristics it produces the images and then the discriminator this adversary you know they are basically adversary to each other they compete with each other that's why it's an adversarial and the network is basically you know this is a network neural network but it's even a large network because both the discriminators and the generators they basically you know composed one you know networks so this is you know photographs of human and not only the face we can actually generate this kind of you know real photographs by something called big gan okay this is, looks like real photographs you know do you see that it's really believable right so human basically can can't differentiate and also, you know, that as we explained with this help of this kind of enemy characters, we can, we can, we can generate. And inspired by this kind of work, then even the Pokemon, Pokemon characters, you know, also has been, you know, generated by some other researchers. And this kind of image to image translations also we can do using this GAN. For example, look, if you just give this kind of image, you know, uh, it's called conditional, you know, GAN. So you just, you know, not entirely random you give some sort of input of realistic things and then it produces this kind of images you just give some sort of this kind of uh, labels and it produces this kind of you know facet you just give give this kind of black and white image it produces this kind of you know output you know color image you give this kind of you know building image or some some landscape image it produces this kind of mapping you give this kind of you know input image and 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 it produces the night output you give this kinds of you know sketch it produces the color photographs so this kind of translation has been done by conditional gan and also you know there is another you know types of gan called cycle cyclic gan so it produces like this you give a painting you may you give some photographs and it's, it produces some painting image you give some horse image produces the algebra image you give some this kind of you know you know summer image i guess and then it produces some winter image right another very interesting thing is text to image translations let's say you just give this kind of you know, text that that let's say hey i want to some part the bird should be red and brown in color and with some stubby big so and then it produces this kind of images and there are different gan produces different kinds of you know images for example the stack gan produces these images and then you know there is some other kinds of things so this one also you can generate you can use the gan to produce different kind of human pose for example this is let's say one image that's we say condition image and you set some target pose okay it's like you know this kind of things so this is basically the target image you like to generate okay uh, but we don't you know uh, give this image so this is the target pose that means and then it, it the, the gan basically you know generate this this image and if you do further you know refinement then it become this image so you see this image almost looks like the target image right it's very interesting so in this way you know if you have some model and if you know the model if you pose like this and that you can use it in a various you know kind of things for example in this you know clothing translation so see you know if this model you know you, you can see in a web web pages and then some e-commerce site that how you know this model looks like when you wear this kind of cloth and you can use these pictures and then you can see that how this dress originally looked like 
and you see this is the output image of what it comes so similarly all of these things these these are input images these are the output images these are the input images and these are the output images so this kind of in a clothing and fashion industry we can use it there is other kinds of you know applications for example this video productions you give this kind of you know input and then you know it, it produces basically different frame you know based on that kind of things so you know the other way to do so there are different kind of interpolation mechanism but you know the gan can also produce this kind of things even gan pro can produce you know this kind of you know different you know kind of you know objects you know that it can generate this kind of object you know, can generate so these you know are some of these you know gan applications now i would you know, say something very nice that you know you can just go you know in this website that this person doesn't exist.com and if you just click every time you click you basically generate some you know very beautiful and very nice image and this looks very realistic image but it's fake image you go this cat doesn't exist and you can see this kind of you know picture even very interesting it, it this let's say this rental doesn't exist you know you you go and you can produce this but it's fake image and there is a page called you know this x doesn't exist.com it basically list all of these sorts of you know fun website and you can see perhaps you can work on that and you can come up with your own applications and it will be so cool okay so good let's let's see the next part in next parts we'll talk about you know content-based multimedia retrieval